Hey sister girls, I'm back with another podcast episode. Today's episode is super special. We are celebrating Black Indie Authors Day while also hosting Behind the Pen virtually. I wanted to create a way to bring readers into the interview a little more so a few sister girls were able to listen in as I interview some of the top indie romance authors out. Alexandria House, Christina C. Jones, and Love Belvin. They have each carved their names in the romance genre and they ain't stopping no time soon. We talked about everything from their careers as authors to how they stay disciplined with so many distractions. This was a great conversation and I know you're going to enjoy it. Okay, welcome everybody to another episode of Sister Girls Podcast. This podcast is very special because we are kicking off Black Indie Authors Day. And for the first time ever, we have a live studio audience, a couple sister girls, they were quick enough because this was the, the ticket that you had to have been on our newsletter. We did not promote this anywhere, but the newsletter and they were quick with the fingers and they got the hot ticket to be in in live interview with Love Belvin, Christina C. Jones and Alexandria House. Hi y'all, how y'all doing today? Wow, grateful to be here. That's Love Belvin. <laughs> I'm doing good. Oh, thank, thank you. you. So everybody's doing good. How has the pandemic been treating you guys? Like what have, let's just start with a few ice uh, icebreaker. What have you guys learned since being in the pandemic? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I've learned anything. Uh, well, in terms of business wise, mm-hmm. but I did realize that this, uh, this economy, the broken economy, this time didn't phase me because now I'm in the business of digital publishing for the most part. That's where I'll speak for myself. That's where I make most of my money. So to God be the glory, the internet didn't break <laughs> during the pandemic. So I had to really buckle down, focus and mm-hmm. not, not really focus so much on the outside noise, which was hard because you didn't know um, what was going to happen, you know, the politically or, you know, uh, public health wise or whatever, but I just really, I was really, really grateful that I was able to just be inside safely, focused on my craft and uh, my, my work continued. That's what I realized. Okay. Oh, that's right. Get them coins. <laughs> CCJ? Um, I would say I, it's been a very, I guess, introspective kind of time for me, mm-hmm. just thinking through and focusing a lot on the ways in which I kind of engage the world mm-hmm. um, in terms of just career-wise, uh, social media, all, all that kind of stuff, just really thinking about and being more, being more intentional. Um, with the way that I use my time and with the way that I treat myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I totally get that. Miss House. Um, business wise, I mean, it's, it's been great. You know, people were locked in, so they, they read a lot. So that was wonderful. Um, personally, I think I came to the realization that I love to travel, but having a home, having a peace and really having the home, my home, the way I want it to be, mm-hmm. I was okay with being in the house because I decorated the way I wanted it decorated. I'm living somewhere where I wanted to live and it's peaceful. Nobody's bothering me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I used to think that I would, I, at first I thought it would be an issue because I like to travel, but you know, I just do stuff like make my room, my bedroom a hotel room and like put a number on the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's so creative. <laughs> I thought I was doing something with the neon light. Um, you putting whole hotels together. Yeah, I got little toiletries in the bathroom. <laughs> it's, it's, it's room 312 for my birthday. So yeah, that's that's what I did. And that's dope. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, all right. So that was just like getting the feel, getting the vibes of where everyone is, where everyone is at right now in this crazy world. I feel like we're on season four of like the Truman Show um, and we're not getting a break. So I want to start by saying, how did you ladies get here? You guys are like the, at the top of the food chain when it comes to Black indie romance. So let's dial it back a little bit. 
And when you first said, I'm going to publish my book, what were the next three steps that helped you get here to this point? We can start next with- three steps. Yeah, next three steps. Um, that's a good one. I, I think for me, it started with uh, building a team. Um, because I, I didn't know how to self-publish. I just decided that that was the best route for me to go. And I understood that that was very popular at the time. And it was actually a blessing to be able to do. Um, so I, I know I had one person figure out a website and how to publish in paperback. I had another person uh, direct me to Lulu. And then from there, I found Smashwords. And from there, I figured out Kindle and all that other stuff. Um, how did I get here? Oh, and then the next thing is, I feel like I tell these stories over and over and over again. But the next thing was um, like I was marketing and I was putting too much effort into the wrong readers, like the wrong demographic. So the next thing I had to do was to, well, the next thing I did was I found one writer that wrote what I felt was similar to me. And I reached out to him, Keith Thomas Walker, I always shout him out. And I'm like, yo, I need to find people who like, who consumes, you know, your type of work because it's not that much off from my work. It's not exactly urban, but it is not exactly, um, but it does have an element, if you will, to it. And then he led me to a, a, a group of few groups where authors were there and they wrote contemporary, uh, you know, black romance. And that's when I found my tribe. So I think those are two that I found. So I built my team and I had to figure out how in the world was I going to connect to the right readers who would appreciate my art? So I don't know what the third thing is, but that's how I ended up here. Once that happened, I was able to work them and, you know, put myself out there and continue to write books. Maybe that's the third one. Continue to put out work. Mm -hmm. BCJ? Um, honestly, <laughs> I... This has all been very accidental for me. Um, it was always more about doing it to say that I had done it than it was ever about becoming a career. And so I tell people often, this is how I know that this is what God meant for me because I wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to end up here. I can mirror a lot of what LB said about you know, finding the right readers and really focusing on those readers, um, those readers being Black women, uh, finding the right community or the right tribe, like being, getting connected with people who, who weren't, who weren't here for like the drama, like it wasn't about doing like mean girl stuff, like we just wanted to write, <laughs> you know, we just wanted to write and we just wanted to talk to somebody who also wanted to write. Like that was really what it was about. And that was like, I, <laughs> I can't even say how important, you know, that has been having those peers that I could turn to who are not even just peers, like for real, for real, like my friends and still piggybacking off of her. Uh, the consistency, the consistency, just not stopping, like not letting any of the noise get too loud, but always moving forward, always writing the next thing like that. It's, it's always been about looking forward. Like you can't get you can't get caught up in what happened and what and who didn't like the book. OK, whatever. Keep writing, like write the next one. You know, maybe they'll like it and maybe they won't. But you keep going. So the consistency, the community and uh, the friendships, like the, you know, the connections with the peers and separately the connection with the readers. Gotcha. House? Um, what I did was um, research and look at uh, the people I looked up to like CCJ and Love Belvin to see what they were doing, learn like what the book covers should look like and stuff like that. Um, the second thing I did was learn to trust myself and my stories mm -hmm. um, because I knew what I was doing was a little different. Um, and so I just had to trust that the uh, characters knew what they were talking about mm -hmm. and let them run it because I, I don't run a thing um, and just be myself, uh, 
kind of take the limits off and not worry about what anybody was going to think about what I was writing and um, be myself like on social media. I just, I'm just silly. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I just get on social media and be silly and post what I want to post. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the beauty of being an independent author. Um, I don't have to answer to anyone. Um, even if I am in, on a contract with someone, if they understand the value of what I do, um, they're not holding me to be a certain way. I just do my thing. So that would be, you know, I researched and observed. Um, I trusted myself. I trusted my characters and I just, I'm just being myself and I, and to let myself enjoy what I'm doing, keep the joy in it and not put pressure on myself to write a certain thing a certain way because I could easily have just written 28 or 30 more let me love yous because it's a big <laughs> it's a popular book yeah but I would be bored and if I get bored then I'm not gonna write anything so just you know trust in my instincts all right so y'all just hit on two things that I definitely wanted to touch on and one of them was about consistency right and we always talk about consistency and a lot of people talk, like a lot of writers talk about writer's block. Um, but I want to talk about distractions because that's usually what sometimes a writer's block could be. It could really just be a distraction. And I think oftentimes when we think of distractions, we think of Instagram or like, you know, the television or, you know, any of those things that is kind of out of scope that we could potentially control, but we are like kind of addicted to it, you know, it's on, on our hip. But I want to talk about distract distractions that's in your everyday life. Like when you're writing, y'all write black romance, right? So largely somebody's meeting someone, y'all, they're falling in love. They're going to have these moments of like really high moments, first dates, first kisses, first time they, you know, do the boom, boom, thank you, man. Right. So there's these high points, there's really high points, but how do you deal with the balance of hitting those deadlines while also having like, oh, I just went to a funeral this week. Oh, I just got sick. Oh, I got to take my daughter to the doctor and I found out she needs braces. And like, it, it could be a whole day of stuff. And then it's just like, but I got to make sure I sit down and like hit this deadline. Because I think that while we always say that we give people grace, like, oh, like extend grace, it's not really real on the internet. People don't give people grace. It's like, we have to constantly remind them that, okay, you're a human and we have to extend people grace. Um, but they really don't. They try to be nice about it. It's like, yeah, I'm extending grace, but when is the book coming out? You know what I mean? So how do you make sure that you sit there and you stay consistent when you have um, your life happening as you're being an artist? Um, we'll start with Miss House. Oh, wow. Okay, this is loaded. Um, I actually, uh, on top of the pandemic, lost my big brother last year who I was, I mean, he basically was like another dad. We were 10 years apart. Um, and he was the model for a lot of my male characters, the way he talked is the way they talk. He gave me a lot of really ignorant ideas, you know, that I put in books that people seem to enjoy. So what I decided to do, um, because there is pressure to put the next book out, especially when this is what you do for a living, this is how you pay, you pay your bills. And what I had to do, I was, I decided to do what I was kind of forced to do was I did give my, I had to give myself grace and I decided to be kind to myself. I'm not a machine. I lost somebody very important to me and I had to, I, I had to take a break. I just had to. And um, I ended up putting a lot of shorter projects out. Mm -hmm. um, I did finish my Audible original because I was on the contract, but I finished it shortly before he passed and turned it in after he passed. I don't know that I would have been able to turn it in um, had I not already finished it. Um, so I'm thankful that my readers, I did tell them, look, it's, it's not going to be much coming out. You know, I'm thankful that they understood that. And they, you know, of course, some people were like, I can't wait for your next book. And I, I'm also grateful for that. I, I want you to anticipate and I want you to read it. And I definitely want you to buy it. Mm -hmm. But I just had to learn to give myself that grace and, and to not take it personally that not everybody knows your circumstance. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't take it personally that they want another book. I had to see it as flattering. And when I, and I wrote what I could write, novelettes and novellas, and I'm very thankful that they devoured it, devoured them and appreciated what I did do. And uh, 
because novellas and novelettes are books. But that's let me get off that soapbox. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I totally get that. Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, because I think I think readers need to hear that. They really do. Um, yeah. CCJ? Uh, yeah, like this is this has been a pretty heavy, a pretty heavy topic in therapy <laughs> for me over, especially over the last year. Um, you have to just take the break you have to just take the break and we're 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 entrepreneurs we're small business women when it really comes down to it once you reach the point that this is like i don't i don't i don't have another check <laughs> like i don't i don't have a, another check coming from somewhere else this is this is it but you have to realize that if every with everything else around you if you aren't taking the time to take care of yourself, you aren't going to be able to do anything either. And so if <laughs> like if I'm if, if I'm not going to get paid, I'm going to not be paid and be well taken care of, at least. You know what I mean? Like I'm, <laughs> like if I'm if 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 it's if it's not coming in because I'm not releasing anything or it's not coming in because I have worked myself into a nervous breakdown like one of those options is better than the other and I'm going to take the option where I'm where I'm taken care of uh just today <laughs> I spent the day you know out looking at stuff for a home construction project and the kids are starting school and I gotta go meet the kids teacher and I got to talk to these people to make sure that they're going to be taking math seriously and I got to go do this and I got to go do that and I need to be writing but you know what it didn't happen today and it's gonna be okay <laughs> because I'm the boss here you know I can set that deadline I can you know I can make that decision but it you have to be willing to make that decision for yourself and deciding no, I need the break. I don't have time today. I don't have it today. And it's okay that I don't have it today. And of course, there's going to be days where it's like, nah, you, 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 you may not have it, but you, you got to find it somewhere. <laughs> like there's definitely those days too, but I think it's so important to like self-care has been kind of a, like a buzz, like almost a buzzword phrase. I don't, I don't know how to say it when it's more than one, um, but it's, it's, it's like a thing that we talk about, but don't actually do. And it's like long baths and getting your nails done, getting your feet done. Like, yes, absolutely. If those things make you feel good, absolutely do them. But at some point it's like, we have to get for real serious about it. And sometimes it's setting a boundary. Sometimes it's saying, no, I can't do that today. No, or not even not even anything extra, just no. <laughs> um, like you have to be willing to make that hard decision of, of just deciding not to. Yeah, I hear that, and that's tough, it's tough. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know, I, um... So before before this year, I wouldn't have been able to answer that because I've just always written like I've never had a problems here a problem hearing from my clients. That's never been an issue for me. But I also never experienced any great distractions other than social media <laughs> um, until this year. I had I had I was hit with two losses back to back, and I was in the middle of delivering a project that had been two years delayed too. Love's encroachment. And um, I had to, I had to muster through, I had to, I had to really muscle through it. Like there, CJ will tell you one day, I'm like, yo, Lon said this, oh my God, I can't believe Lon did this. And next day I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm crying, like just crying and trying to get through the conversation. So when a house was saying earlier how, you know, um, she didn't get a lot of writing done, but she's still been busy. I was like, yo, I feel that like this summer, I, I've already started, you know, with my clients, I really have, but I've also... I've been okay with doing other things in my business because I've been busy all summer too. I've been doing a lot of back end stuff uh, uh, with my website and all that other stuff. So I've been busy, but there's just some times where I like that. I didn't, I was under pressure because I had to finish the book and no matter how much grief I was sitting in, it didn't matter. I, I did have to get that book out and no one put more pressure on me than me. So um, I think it's just, 
I just muscle through it. You know, you just have to get through it. But what speaking of a house earlier, like I remember feeling like, dang, I just put out a book and here go these women again. When's the next LV? When's the next? I'm like, dog, I just put that out like two weeks ago. I don't, I don't feel that pressure anymore. I used to feel that pressure. It used to be so miserable. Like guys, I just need some time. Like these are not short books I'm writing. Like I did. So I, I have to, I must say, I, I haven't felt that maybe it's because emotionally I'm growing past it and I don't allow it to phase me, but just those distractions. I, I, I guess I'm just getting better with it. And, but I do need to learn self-care better. I really do. Because I do believe that I don't deal with things the way that I should. And I think the trick of it is because I never, ever, ever, ever have a problem hearing from my clients. Um, it's just focusing on their voices and recording it. So I don't have the answer to it, but I definitely did experience it this year. The, the big distraction. Wow. Um, thank y'all all for sharing it. Cause I mean, you, you never really, um, you don't know what, when they say you don't know what somebody's going through until they tell you, but it's just like, you shouldn't have to tell someone that you're going through something for them to just be like, yo, let me back it up a little bit. Let me, you know, give them some space because we don't know, especially because we have our own lives. So I think a lot of readers are going to appreciate that. Um, and just y'all being transparent about that. Cause y'all could have definitely said, um, I meditate and I watch Ianla and then I keep writing. <laughs> All right. So let's make it a little more. Let's like switch it up a little bit. So I want to know, and y'all got to answer this question because I can answer the question for y'all, but y'all probably might, may or may not agree with me. What book or character can you pinpoint and say, I was in my bag with that one. And what was distinctly different about that book or character that upped the ante on your skill set as a writer, as an author? Can I go first? Oh, you must have. Did, did I think you got I do. <laughs> no, I do. Um, I think <laughs> I think as Mayor and Raina, I was in my bag with them. And it's because I lived with them for so many years. Mm -hmm. I was so unafraid. I had nobody listening to me. It was just me, mm -hmm. <laughs> myself and I. And I didn't give two craps. I just put it all out there. And I there was no pressure. There was no deadline. It was just me living with these people like, wow, recording this and just taking my time with it. I felt like that was some of my better writing. Well, could use better editing, but <laughs> I feel like just emotionally, I, I, I was, I don't know if I've been more connected to, uh, to other clients than I was Raina and Asmir. Do you think it was because you sat with them for the longest without for years looking for okay. years with no one looking exactly no one looking no pressure didn't care didn't know what su reader support felt like at the time all I knew was Rain and Asmir all I knew is what they told me all I knew is what they showed me and it was just us and it was very 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 intimate I was telling CCJ this a couple years ago like dang I wish I can go back to those those years but you just don't have that you don't have that time so um yeah, that 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 was it for me. And that's actually my favorite series by you. I'm just saying, just want to put that out. Thank there. you, um, thank very, you. Because he's from talk. Brooklyn. Because he's from Brooklyn. Because he's from. Brooklyn. It could be. It could, but no, it was just really. It it was just. It was. It was just a moment. You know what I mean? We don't get a lot of you know moments. Um, but the question was also, when did you know that your skill set as a writer, like, how did you know from book? you know, as mayor to like Sadiq, like what was the, like, how do you measure that? Like, am I getting good or am I like, what is the measurement for you? Um, what is the measurement for me? Um, I think, I don't know. Cause my last project, and I know this sounds so corny, but my last project, I just remember just sitting in a puddle of grief I remember just like really, really feeling it and like just feeling like this is some adult ish. Like this is some real, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> sorry for your feelings. I'm not thinking about your feelings. This is just what it is. Um, and I feel like that was my turning point, my last project, because then also I've never wrote, I've, I've never written about both male and female at a mature age, you know, or as old as those two are. But I, I, I felt a difference there. And I don't even know if it was about technique so much. It was as it was about me really feeling the the, the clients that I was th that, that that were in my office at the time, that were on my couch at the time. So, um, dang, that sounds so corny, but really, I, I feel like that to me was a breakthrough writing for me because I was just all in with them. Got it, Miss House. 
if you need me to repeat the question, I can because we just had like a nice little sidebar. <laughs> um, evidently, it's Big Sal. <laughs> <laughs> But that could be for the readers, but it might not be your barometer. Like that might not be your personal like thing. So don't not the readers, you personally. No, I'm I'm gonna I'm have to go with him. Okay, um, I was gonna go with him too, but I was just like I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let you cook. I, I, I don't know what I did, but I did some with him, <laughs> and um, um, and and I know that he he's definitely a turning point because he opened so many doors. Just him alone mm-hmm. opened a whole bunch of doors for me. So uh, he he changed he changed the game for me and he also had me petrified he's he, he became the metric for me mm-hmm. that can i get it as good as that not not necessarily the same mm-hmm. but can i engage readers the way i did with that story and it was super it was so much fun to write oh my gosh mm-hmm. i do wish I, i'm like love i wish i could go back and write it again because it was so much fun it was so much fun creating like bugs and esther and i know y'all hate them but they was I, Bugs was hilarious to me. I would laugh the whole time I was writing his parts because he was so stupid. So I loved uh, little Nat Nat. I loved writing her parts. I loved writing jokes. It was just a story. And I legit just said one uh, national novel writing month, I want to write about a rapper. And that's how he came to be. Well, you and know, then, thank God. Glory be. <laughs> <laughs> and then all this stuff happened. And I'm sitting up like, what is going on, yo? <laughs> So yeah, it's definitely I have to give I, I have to give him props. I got it. I, I'll agree. I'm not gonna argue that. <laughs> Miss Christina. Um, I have several different ones that I that are like cycling in my head for this because they're they all kind of mark these certain turning points for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to make it easy for myself, I'll go with the first one um, and I'll go with Roman and Simone from A Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Mm-hmm. And what made them just so, I guess, pivotal for me is I had just kind of gone through this situation. It was still kind of in the midst of this situation where I kind of felt like kind of felt like my my talent was being questioned, like my work ethic was being questioned, like my longevity. I just, I, I felt like not necessarily that I had something to prove to anyone else, but it was more about proving to myself. And so I, I just kind of took all the reins off, like all these ideas about what a romance novel had to be, what any arcs or anything that it had to look like these different well the hero can't do this and the heroine can't do that and this can't happen and that can't happen all of that stuff that I had people in my head saying and that I have been seeing on the internet about what you know how to write a romance novel and all of that I just let all of it go and I just wrote from my heart and all everything that was like really like he gonna do what the baby mama gonna be where all of that I just let it go and I just wrote and I feel like like that is still like that's still a temperature gauge for me like how much have you been able to let go of well people are going to think this and people are going to think that and just just write just write the freaking story and again, people are going to like it and people aren't. Like, there's people who probably hate that book, who probably never read me again (laughs) because of that book, you know, and and that's okay. But for me, it was a book that showed me, like, nah, you know, like, people can say this and people can say that, but nah, I can write a damn book. Like, I know that's right. (laughs) Like, debate your mama. I can write a book. (laughs) (laughs) Debate your mama. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to keep this train going. Um, you all write about Black love and romance, and it's all really good. It's great. Um, and we live in a, uh, the age of social media, and a big topic, like on like every other week, is somebody in some thread talking about struggle love. Um, and then, for example, when I watched Love and Basketball as an adult, when I watched it, it came out when I was really young. I was like a grown up because I was like 
10, 11, 12, like really watching like adult movies and being like over the moon with these characters. And then when I watched it more recently in my adult years, I'm like, this was not um, right. Like I wouldn't want this at all. Um, so how do you balance as writers making sure that even though the characters have struggles in black romance, that the story doesn't turn into a struggle love? Because just taking in uh, love and basketball and even you can use your, I want you guys to kind of express with your own stories um, to have a moment where it's just like, okay, that was disrespectful. We don't really address that or we kind of do, but they at the end we get a happily ever after. But it's just like, hmm, when I'm reading this, it's like, nah, that's not, you know what I mean? How do you make sure you have that balance where it's like, okay, I can see what that happened. I can see what that person slipped up or messed up, but then I can see some type of growth and some type of learning or some type of healing. Like, how do you make sure that there's a balance? Um, I can start with uh, CCJ. Um, <laughs> so I, I feel two ways about this. In one way, um, like, I, I agree, absolutely, you know, keep that shit away from me. I ain't balling for, for nobody's heart. Like, what? Like, no. <laughs> that ain't happening. But on the other hand, I feel like as, you know, as, as fictionalized and dramatized as, as that is, like, stuff like that is real, too. And I think that a lot of times we get so caught up in well, I wouldn't want that. And I don't want to see that. And we forget that that's sometimes that's actually real people's stories. And so I try to, I try to keep my focus there, like making sure that I'm telling the story that I'm making it real, even when it's maybe characters who are like vampires or something, I'm trying to make it as real as possible. Um, but I, I, I try my very best not like disrespect on on either side like mm -hmm. we're not just letting that ride we're not just letting that rock like it might happen because you know it happens you say the wrong thing you say some stuff you really shouldn't have said <laughs> to the other person like that happens but in a in real healthy human relationships we're like that's not just gonna rock like we're gonna talk through that like it may not be immediate it may be or not necessarily talk through but we're gonna communicate our way through it and we're gonna we're gonna settle that there's gonna be some type of apology moment there's gonna be there's going to be some type of resolution to that like if I'm putting it down in books because I remember <laughs> I was this was years ago like it was right it was probably right around the time I of a crazy little thing called love I was at a book event one of the first book events I've ever been to and a woman approached me with her this little girl was like 14 or 15 years old they had been reading my work together and that was not necessary like I was like oh my god <laughs> On one hand, but on the other hand, I was reading Eric Jerome Bickey and you know I'm whoever say, else. I sure was when, reading the whole lot yeah, of people when I wasn't supposed to be right. <laughs> I was reading that stuff too, and I really felt in that moment like I didn't feel I didn't feel any need to like tone down anything or not have adult content or anything like that. But it I did feel a responsibility, like even like it just really highlighted it for me that there's young girls seeing this and for a lot of them, just like for me, this is the way that they're going to see other relationships besides the one that they're watching, you know, with, with, with just their parents mm -hmm. or their aunties or uncles or siblings or grandparents or whatever family dynamic or whatever we're modeling for them at the same time. And that's not to say that, well, we should only, we should, it should only be a good example or, you know, or anything like that, because again, we're still writing real stories and we're still, you know, we're, we're still trying to, you know, work through what's happening in our imagination. But at the same time, they should see what healthy conflict resolution looks like. They should see what enthusiastic consent looks like. Like these are things that I feel like on some level we have a responsibility to. Now, I mean, at the same time as fiction, you should write what you want to write. But I do feel at the same time, like if we can, we should be, you know, we should be modeling how to healthily work through these things. 
not a difficult answer. <laughs> <laughs> Miss House. Um, I don't know if this is gonna answer you, but <laughs> my my goal, my ministry <laughs> is to create stories about people who are realistic, who are flawed, um, because not everybody in the black community gets therapy. They we probably all should because we're in America, but um, not everybody gets therapy. Not everybody's perfect. Not a, not everybody makes the right decisions all the time. But that doesn't mean you don't deserve for someone to love you. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is make real characters uh, in realistic situations. But I don't ever want black women to think that we have to earn love from black men. I think that's a narrative mm -hmm. that is out there, you know, where you have to go through some things in order to get love. Ups and downs is not folks cheating on you. Ups and downs is not folks hitting you. Ups and downs is not them lying to you all the time. That's not the ups and downs of a regular relationship. So I try not to, to do that. Now, I know folks that read flagrant, y'all gonna beg to differ. But... Um, <laughs> I, it, at, at the crux of even that story is this man loved her. He was he was messed up in the head. He was doing some things he shouldn't have done, but he loved her. Mm -hmm. So, and, and he had, as bad as he did, he did some really good things because he loved her. So I just want black women to be, to see themselves loved unconditionally mm -hmm. and not have to earn that because no one should have to earn. You shouldn't have to take crap in order for someone to love you. So that's my mission because there's so, the narrative around black women being the lead, last ones picked. And it's just, it's not all the, all the way true. There are plenty of, of black couples and black men who love black women, but that's just not the narrative being pushed. And so it's like I said, that's my ministry. Black women who are not necessarily perfect. They're not film bots. They're not business women. They're not um, the, you know, they may whine a little bit. They may, um, what people like to say that my, some of my women are weak, um, <laughs> but I don't see it as weak. I think it, it, you have to be strong to accept love these days and to accept someone wanting to be there for you and, and to do things for you. Um, so I don't know if that answers it, but it did. I, I just, I just want black women to, to, to open those books and be like, I deserve to be treated like this. I deserve to be loved. I don't care what I do for a living. I don't care where I live. I don't care how many kids I have. I don't care how I look. I don't care how big or small, dark or light I am. I deserve to be loved. That's just, that's that's my ministry and I'm, 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 I'm sticking beside it. I'm gonna stick beside it. <laughs> <laughs> this holler's so loud. <laughs> Well, let me let me answer the question. I think that's phenomenal because I'm over here like, yes, yes, girl. Yes, because that's how I am in my personal life. Like when I'm talking about dating and what you should expect, I have like a lot of young people who are in their 20s or even the younger ones that are like in school, like grammar school or whatever. Like I'm constantly talking about relationships and, and how to view black women. I don't care, you know, if she's mouthy or not, but that is my personal life. So I'm, I'm with you 100% on that a house and also my women are often referred to as we too i don't buy that but if that's what you want to that's what you feel then i can't tell you how to feel um but to answer the question i see my clients are real people to me so i don't have a, co a conscious about you know how the story is going to turn out I, so i'm only selecting these people because what they're presenting to me is very interesting to me anyway um, it's almost like watching a movie and, and seeing the ending. If I can't really see your ending or if I don't understand how you, you're going to reach your happily ever after, I'm probably not going to pick up your story. Mm -hmm. But I'm just allow. I just let them run them up. I let them be who they are. But to answer your question, you asked, for examples, if there were any, if there was any couple that I knew I was adamant about making sure I paced them correctly, it was with uh, Zoe and Stitten with Waiting to Breathe because that story came to me. I was already working on like Lit at the time. That was my, Lit was supposed to be, Love's Inconvenient Truth was supposed to be my second project. And I'd already started with them. But then when I met, I met Stitten first. 
And then he just kept talking, kept, kept, kept talking. And then I'm like, I remember saying to CCJ Bay, if he keeps talking, it was like in May, if he keeps talking past such a date, like I'm just going to take them on because, you know, I, I can't stop hearing from him. And then when I heard from Zoe, it was a wrap. And Zoe was just like, off the chain and it was a manipulated timeline. You had to go from past to future, from past to mm-hmm. future. And it was like a whirlwind. But I remember saying to her, and I could, it's easy for me to say, I said it to CCJ, CCJ's on the person. That's not on my team, not on my editing team that I'll talk to, or my sister that I'll talk to these, about, talk to about these characters. But I remember saying, yo, what I don't want is when we get to book two at 80%, they finally get it together and we really don't know them. So that was the only time I remember saying pacing is an issue for me because I want to see them working through this. I don't want to wait until the end of the book for them to get together. And that's it. Like we spent an entire series watching the conflict and there's just no peace. So for me, it passed that, it, 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 I passed the grade for me, you know, yeah. readers are going to complain about it, but um, that is the example that I have. But other than that, I just let them go. I don't really think about anything I don't really think about readers I I I because if if I'm not feeling you or if you have a lifestyle that I just I don't think that I'm just I can responsibly take on I'm not you're never gonna sit on my couch anyway so if you got me intrigued then boom let's go and they they're just who they are you know that the, the, I, I, I like that answer and the couch client thing it never gets old when you say because when you say I visualize like these people just walking into your little office um, really and really just having a moment but I think you all made a really great point and kind of just having that freedom to you have a parameter but you're also not afraid to kind of like do you um, that's what I got from that take but that leads me to my next question um, what does healing look like in black romance when when you're writing and how far are you willing to deep dive into the character psyche to get there when I say character psyche obviously you know how they dress how they think how they walk but I'm talking about like what trauma points are you like well damn am I gonna push them over the edge or am I gonna like tiptoe around it and then at what point were you like well dang is this really healing or is this just you know trying to force a happily ever after am I just forcing the book to go into um, another chapter or, or introducing another character how do you make sure that the healing um, we can see that when we're reading and not just be like well I, I think they somebody I mean well they got married at the end and had a baby you know what I'm saying if I'm not clear I, I'll restate I think I think I got it I think for me that project would be Love Unaccounted with Ezra and uh, Lex when I first m- m- not when I first met Lex that's not true when I started getting to know Lex and I learned that she was assaulted, she was sodomized. Like it was really dark. And then to have her get into this relationship, a sexual relationship, because that's how they started off before there was any heart or love or intimacy or anything. Then for her to get into this relationship with this man who wanted to use, I don't want to use the word physical violence, but that's, that was his kink. That's what he was into. You know, it can turn into, you know, corporal punishment if, if, you know, if he felt that it was necessary. I, obviously I did not put on, I didn't pump the brakes. I rolled with it and I was just, but I was concerned in the back of my mind of, yo, is that a lot on her? Like, what does that mean for her? But I'm so glad I just went with it because Love, um, uh, In Love with Ezra, the second book is one of my favorite books by me. Like I, I have maybe three, maybe three, definitely two. That is one. And it's because I was there with Lex when she was falling in love with this man because something inside her was breaking. And in the way that she come, came up, it was not likely that she was going to be able to experience this true relationship where you're really in love with someone, you're building a, a life with someone or you want to, <laughs> or you want to, and you know, you have a household with him, you wake up with him every night, you go to bed with him. Lex never knew that. And um, I was just so happy to walk through that process with her because I felt like it did work. I think it, it worked out for them. It did pan out. Her previous traumas did not kick up um, the way that they could have, but um, that definitely was a project where I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. This can really be bad after I was like into it. And, um, but I'm just glad, again, I let them, I let them go. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I, I felt like I was rewarded because I was satisfied with how they ended up. I was too. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> it was a really uh, great love story. Um, Miss House. Um, 
um, I don't run anything. So um, <laughs> I, whatever they give me is what I give y'all. And sometimes there's some things I really don't want to give y'all. I'm like, y'all, seriously, no, now, uh-uh, we don't need to do this. Um, to reference uh, flagrant again, mm-hmm. I tried, there were some things that people got upset about that I really did try to change. Mm-hmm. And it just wouldn't work. You know, it just didn't work. I tried and tried and tried. I would read through it. And they were like, we told y'all, we told you what it was. You change it if you want to. Mm-hmm. So I had to change it back to what the characters gave me. Um, and I feel like I'm proud of the project, you know, because I, I stayed true to the story. So that's what I do. I just stay true to what they give me and, and go as deep as what the information they give me. Um, sometimes the storylines are not um, as deeply emotional. Um, sometimes they're way more emotional and deep than I intended or thought they would be because my I can intend what I want to. Um, it's it's going to always be up to them. I got to listen to them. Um, like them boys was uh, had darker, darker elements. Yes. Um, but that's who they were. It, the darker their past is what shaped their, their present. And they fought through that to be, still be good men. Were they, do they have sharp edges? Yeah. Um, are they very rough men? Yeah. Are they men, men, man's men? <laughs> they are, but, um, it's kind of what they were bred to be, you know? So, and I'm proud. I'm super proud of, of, of that trilogy. So I don't think I could ever go wrong if I listen to the characters and I follow the story they get, give me. So. I like that, CCJ. Yeah, I agree with everything that you know that the other two ladies have already said. And just thinking back to you know both you know both of the different projects that they mentioned, um, I really hate the idea that that people don't deserve love until they're healed. And to be clear, I know that you're not saying that, but it's something that I see a lot. I see it so much, you know, we, we, you tell people, you know, well, you need to go to therapy before you get another man or you're going through this. And, you know, and I mean, there's different situations for everything. I know like when you're like Alcoholics Anonymous, they tell you, you know, leave the dick alone or whatever, (laughs) but like, for situations outside of that, I appreciate that we're able to present these characters who are imperfect or who have been through these things, who are not healed. I think about equivalent exchange where my hero and heroine meet each other, where my heroine literally still has her face is still covered in a bruise, you know, from someone putting his hands on her. And it does not mean that she hasn't encountered her soulmate. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, she should put that off because even though she tries to, because, you know, all the messaging she's gotten about it's not the right time and you should wait and you should get this done and you should get that done. And I think what's most important is, you know, for the author, you know, and I think that both of these ladies, you know, have done a phenomenal job. <laughs> my, 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 my co-stars today have done a phenomenal job with making sure that the reader understands and that the narrative entails that their healing did not come about because they got a man. Their heal, he was part of that. He supported that and he made space for that. And he maybe provided the resources for them to get the healing that they needed, but their healing did not come like love and sex didn't magically make them okay. There was other inner work that had to be done through therapy and really digging into their feelings and really checking in with themselves and taking care of themselves and talking through and working through these things. So I think that there is, you know, a responsible way to handle it in a realistic way where we see, you know, getting in a relationship doesn't magically make you okay, but getting in a relationship can absolutely help you be okay. I hear that. Um, So my next question is going to be about like pacing a little bit. So how do you know what characters to move forward within a story? 
even like side characters. Um, how do you flesh out who are the main characters, who are the best friends, and positioning those key characters in a way that they don't overshadow the main characters, but complement them and help move the story along? Bella? Um, so, so, well, for my clients, right? Let's start with them. Like I said, if they give me enough volume, like, and, and I can honestly, because I may not be able to see the whole story before I get started. That is, that is absolutely untrue. I don't see the whole story. But if I can see how you guys made it to your ATA, then I'm, I'm with you. Um, and then I think based upon who they are and, and what, it, what they're presenting, I think it's interesting what sidekicks they have around them. Like Tashi, Tashi was... Um, she started with the love unaccounted and then she worked her way to, to Jersey to live. And then she became friends with Balan and, and people, she's one of my most popular sub characters and people love to, and I love Tashi. I would love Tashi to be my home girl, but I just, I'm not interested in taking her on as a client, but it's just that element that they bring that may challenge my clients or may um, honestly um, may, may, really illustrate the difference between my, my like Stanton and Alton, um, Austin, like Alton, Austin, those two together. And even Stanton, you know, would always say like, why do you like, why, why are you cheating on her? Like, why do you do? And I didn't do this on purpose, but in retrospect, it, it lets you know that Stanton wasn't that much of an asshole. Like he just, you know, yeah, he did something like crazily stupid, but he, he wasn't an asshole. So it just, I think it just depends on who the clients are and obviously you know uh their personalities and 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 what i don't know what 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 like uh rory with sadiq the unlikely pairing you know and i don't know it's, it's something that's just it's never been an issue for me and it's always been fun because it's, for them for, for sub characters for me their friends and stuff that's not work for me that's my entertainment whereas the work comes in with my clients i feel like i just talk too much about that like, but I'm, I'm there. You made it make sense though. Um, okay. How? <laughs> well, I'm going to disappoint y'all because I, I, I listen. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not methodical at all with this writing thing. It was a little I just thing. be writing. I sit <laughs> down. I know who the couple is. Mm -hmm. Whoever talk is loud and stuff in my ear, that, that's the couple. And I just sit down and start writing. And, uh, you know, I think, okay, they can't, it can't all be introspection. They're going to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, let me they, go, they got a friend. I mean, that's how, I, that's how I, you know, they got a friend. And as far as like, unk, I just, I just wanted something silly. I needed somebody to say something silly because I try to balance all the seriousness with comedy mm -hmm. and all the seriousness and nastiness mm -hmm. with comedy. So, it's, it's, I try to always have some something somebody funny in there. Mm -hmm. I can't have too much of Unc because he's a scene stealer. So um, I just I promise y'all I just sit down and write. I know I don't I don't write notes because if I write notes y'all ain't gonna get no book because I don't wrote something and I be, I feel like I've done that's enough. I don't wrote these notes. That's all I'm gonna do. Um, I don't do outlines. I I have a, a whiteboard with the name of the books that I'm going to write, I plan to write in the name of the main characters. That's, that's the most planning I do. And um, it just, I get to a scene. Okay. He needs someone to talk to. Okay. Somebody else needs to be in the room. Okay. This, that, and the other. That's, that's it. I, it it's so haphazard. Um, I, I know that this is, it's got to just be a gift because child, I ain't trying to do it right. I just, I'm just, <laughs> just writing. <laughs> I like that though. I actually, uh, I can appreciate somebody just, you know, doing them and, 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 and that we get what we get and it's always really good. Well, so there is a method there. We just can't pinpoint to it. To my madness. Yeah, <laughs> you can't pinpoint it on the outside looking in, but it's a method. Um, CCJ? Um, I would say that my process is kind of a blend. Like I, like I'm like house where I, I just, I'm, I'm just doing stuff <laughs> and the people just come, just come in where they come in. But also like, it'll be like the side characters. They, they're so easy. They're so easy. And I almost, I almost hate when it's like a really good side character because 
people are going to be asking about them. People want more. People want more from them. People want to know more about them. I'm writing something right now where my betas have already been like, okay, so we're getting a book. I, I'm not thinking about them. I, <laughs> I don't know right now. Like I'm focused on, you know, I'm focused on the main characters. And I think that it's more distracting for the reader than it is for us. Like when we're writing, because our heads are consumed with the romance. Our heads are consumed with, you know, with, with, with the couple and making sure that they're, you know, that they're well drawn and all of that. And everybody else is like seasoning. Um, But when you guys are reading it, it's like, y'all are picking up, y'all are kind of getting it all at once. And it's a little more balanced for y'all than it is for us. And so it's kind of hard to know if somebody is too much until, you know, until, like until you're looking back at it afterwards, but I write myself into corners a lot with side characters because I end up going back to side characters often. Like when I'm writing their stories, usually when I'm writing a book, the side characters aren't, they're usually not saying I got next, but later, like five months down the line, they'll, you know, like, remember me? Like, no, I don't remember you. Who are you? <laughs> Cause sometimes I won't even remember the person's name. It'll just be like, Oh, so-and-so's friend from that other book. I remember she wanted to have a stationary shop and I feel like writing somebody that is, a, you know, that has a stationary shop or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they'll come back to me in that way. But it's typically, I, I'm, I won't say that I've never purposely written a series, but I don't be wanting to write more than one book about these people. <laughs> so it's never, it's never like on purpose. Like when I'm introducing people, it is like, it's it's never on purpose. Like, yeah, I know I'm, I'm writing this side character and that's definitely going to have a story of their own. Like it's never purposeful. Gotcha. So we're going to roll into sex scenes, but I don't want to talk about sex scenes. I know you're like, oh my God, but this is why we're here. We wouldn't have came Um, and we couldn't hear about the sex scene. But everybody talks about dope sex scenes. I mean, but in Black romance, you know you're going to get some out of the box sex scenes. But that's not what I really want to focus on. I want to actually focus on the intimate scenes. Um, And how do you connect those intimate moments with with certain characters to make sure that the kiss um on the forehead or you know the circling of the wrists or like the uh the the thigh make when somebody's driving holding the thigh and like you know the certain like uh you know rubbing of the elbows how do you make sure that you manage um these intimate moments so that the sex scenes don't just overshadow a book but you can see like oh they have like a chemistry in this building um and to and I'm trying to be very clear about this but with certain characters because you might have like this alpha male like this quiet girl so what would be there and like how do you find out well, what would be their intimate like well how do they kind of get there like get to that point is it hand holding is it a forehead kiss is the opening of a door is it a picnic scene like how do you place these um these moments when it's when you've written so many moments like this um I'll start with CCJ since I've been looking at you the whole time by the way <laughs> you've been like the focal point everybody's been like I'm just like yeah but I'm trying not to call you every time <laughs> well for me it like it's so specific to each couple because you have these different personalities so it's going to be a different dynamic every time and it's that is actually a lot easier than the sex to me. Like those kind of quiet moments where you see like, like, man, they are like for real comfortable with each other. <laughs> like, did he just put her bonnet on? Like, like the stuff like that, that really shows you like that, that connection that's there. The stuff plays in my head for me. Like it plays in my head like a movie. Like when I'm like when I'm going to sleep at night, like I go to sleep with whatever characters I'm writing, I go to sleep with my characters on my mind. And often, you know, I'm 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 in dreams with them. And the stuff that they're going through, the things that are gonna happen for them is really playing in my head. And so those times makes it very easy <laughs> because all I have to do is write it down because my imagination, you know, like in those uh in that realm sleep has 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 built these building blocks for me but at other times it's really just about 
letting the dialogue and letting the moment and just kind of getting, just really settling in deep and quiet. Like I'm back here in my office. I might have my noise canceling headphones on and I'm just really like, I'm in that space with them. Like I'm like, I'm just sitting back and visualizing, okay, when he says this, what would be the natural next step? And she's gonna, you know, if she walks over here and I might even, I might even talk the dialogue I might even do it out loud, just anything to kind of really immerse myself in their space and let them tell me what, what those moments are going to be. Gotcha. House. Um, like, uh, CCJ said, it's all in knowing the characters, um, kind of sitting with them. I, I don't write notes and stuff, but I do sit with them for a while before I start writing, um, I let them talk to me and I kind of get to know them because as like Love Bevan said, uh, they, they are real people to me. They have real personalities. And then the intimate, the intimacy is kind of just going to be what that person would do. Um, an example I can think of is Neil McLean. Um, Neil is a, is a Renaissance man. He's a scholar. He loves to read. And because of that, intimacy with him and Sage was given her sharing that knowledge with her and they had their little book club where they you know reading to each other and um to me the, the, them in the bed reading was like the most intimate thing uh, and picking books to read and him just knowing knowing what she needed as far as her self-esteem and, and how to help her understand what she meant to him you know you know, snatching her up out of clubs and stuff. All of that stuff. <laughs> All of that is it's just, it's just in knowing what that person would do. And I try to, the consistency, especially when I'm doing a series, I try to make that person be that person in every book, even if it's not their book. Mm -hmm. the, the things they would do in their book are the same things they're going to do in every book because that's who they are. That's their personality. What, what Neil would do, Big South wouldn't necessarily do, uh, or for them boys, what Set would do or say, Shu wouldn't do. You know, mm -hmm. Shu's a quiet guy. So um, just it's in knowing the, the characters and knowing what would be intimate for them because it wouldn't be the same thing for a different character. And as far as the sex scenes, I just, you know, I love to write them. You know, I, I, if it was up to me, they'd get it on word one page one. But anyway. <laughs> Gotcha. Melvin? Hey, house is a fool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, no, no different from what CCJ and Alexandria has said. Um, it, it really does depend on who they are and everything is not for everyone. Like Lex and Ezra, uh, Lex wanted to wake up and him not be out of the bed. So she thought that was intimacy for her. So the scene where she woke up and he was still there and she was like looking like oh my god and he's looking at her like what is the big deal like or you know lady are you nuts that for her was intimacy that was that quiet moment that didn't well actually it did it did spur some sex <laughs> uh it did bring out some sex but that was her reaction to it but for him it's just like she wants me here I don't know why but I'm gonna make it happen today like whatever um or um Stinton coming home at the end of uh, book two in the Wait in the Breeze series. And uh, I, I believe Zoe was in the the, the, the jacuzzi or the, the, the garden tub or whatever. And how I, I believe he just naturally got in with her, but just small moments like that. It's just really who they are. So it's just, it really has to make sense for them. And like CCJ, like I go to bed with them. If, I, if I'm not having a great night of sleep, I wake up and then I hear from them. So, and, and that's often when I'll get those soft moments um, from them. So it, I, I don't think I have any different experience from these two ladies. Gotcha. So we, we, we push in time, but stick with me. I only got a few more questions to go. Um, I have uh, this question. Um, I read this book called Big Magic. It's by Elizabeth uh, Gilbert. Um, she's an author and she writes for, she, the book is about like writers and creatives. Um, and there's this one specific story where she says, I'm paraphrasing, so do not quote me on this uh, quote because it is a paraphrase. Um, she says, writers are everything and they're nothing at all. Meaning that they're nothing at all because what you guys do, you don't do surgery. You don't, um, you can't like 
uh, you're not doing anything that would be like, oh, it's a miracle on paper, right? If they put an author next to a, a doctor, people would naturally just say the doctors are the most gifted ones. And, you know, if it was a lifeboat situation, y'all would get dumped off, right? But at the same time, you're everything because you have readers who literally will walk up to you and say, you know, I was in depression and I read your book, or I was um, about to, you know, hurt myself and then I read your book, or I was going through this big divorce and your, your stories were the things that got me through um, this tumultuous time, or I gained my confidence because I met a character in your book and it reminded me that I needed to live more, live out loud, or be embrace my body, or whatever it is. And so it's like in that instance that the writer is everything, because then of course the writer could be the writing the book or have written the book that the surgeon who uses that book for escapism, right? So in that regard, and then knowing we have like live listeners here who've been, y'all been excellent, by the way. If I could give out like brownie points or something, y'all been quiet, mutes have been on. How do you feel when that happens? Like, what is that process? Like, I mean, we know what it looks like when we see you guys at events and stuff like that. And when we see you take the pictures and when we see like, you know, the events and stuff come up, but how does it really feel um, when, because I can imagine that you're writing and you're in your own space, your own zone, your own cities, your own states. But then when you come outside of that and then you go to an event or you even see somebody in person, it's like, yo, I got a story to tell you. This changed my life. And in the moment, you're just having, you know, you're doing what's on your heart. So how do you feel? I, I know there is a question in that, but <laughs> I want you guys to, you know, how do you feel in those moments? Um, CCJ, again, I've been looking at you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so actually, uh, just like a week or maybe two, maybe two weeks ago at this point, I was just, I was at house party and someone put a card in my hand and I could not read it, you know, at that time because it was the middle of an event, you know, you can't stop. You gotta, you know, just move, 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 keep going. And then later when I read this card, I was on the way home, just in my car, absolutely bawling. Um, because of the contents of this card. Um, it was a reader who was just sharing with me all these difficult, um, difficult things that she had been through over, you know, the past year with COVID and just other things that she had been through. And she was thanking me, you know, because she credited me and my work as having helped her get through that. And the, 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 like the closing of it was, I love you. Um, and that was just like, when you, when you, when you have those moments like that with people who, because it's like when someone reads my book and somebody purchases a, purchases a book from me on Amazon, I never know like the person, you know, on the other end of it, like readers can tell you, oh, I read your book, but like when it's, when it's live and in the moment, you don't know what's happening. But when you have someone like right there in front of you, you know, someone telling you, you know, in a quick whisper, you know, your book saved my life, like, like that type of stuff. It makes, it makes like the negative reviews and like all that, the little petty negative mm -hmm. stuff. It makes all of that seem so, so small. Um, and it really, makes you feel like those tough moments that you may have had to push through in order to get something done and those those all those things that you questioned you know should I really be telling this story should I be writing a character like this I've had I've written characters who were suffering through or you know working through cancer and I've had women who were going through that same thing at that same time, you know, in my inbox telling me, thank you so much for seeing me and for just showing that care. And it really, I guess that's my answer. Like it makes all the other stuff, it makes all the noise seem so unimportant <laughs> because when you're in a position to be able to really impact people and help people feel seen that's what you have to lean into not like not any of the other stuff yeah 
Yeah, that's and it's really special. Um, Belvin. It, it's it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Um, and I'll be honest with you. <laughs> By the time I get to like a signing or or if I'm home and I get a like a DM or an inbox, I'm I know for sure I'm working on a new client and I don't remember a lot of stuff. Like I'm not with them anymore. But when you hear how much it touches them, I'm just like, it's very, very, very much overwhelming. But I came across a meme um, a couple years ago. I can't uh, quote it verbatim, but it, what I got from it was um, once you're developing this, this manuscript, it belongs to you. But when you hit publish, it no longer belongs to you. There's some claims you just don't have to it. And, and, and like CCJ mentioned earlier, like people have a right to feel the way they want to feel just because I, when I was recording, this is what was in my heart because this is what I got from, you know, my clients doesn't, doesn't mean that the reader has to interpret it that way. It belongs to them. So I don't argue. I know I write, you know, complicated people. Um, and I just, I, I try to understand it and respect it for, for that. And, and that's pretty much it. Gotcha. Ms. House? Um, it is, I don't know that I've gotten used to it yet. Um, it's always a surprise for me. And I know everything's a surprise for me, honestly. Um, but it's always a surprise for me. It always touches my heart. And especially because I was an avid reader before I even thought about writing. So I really do understand that sentiment of a book saved your life or helped you get through a hard uh, time. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered Joan Bass's Black series during the um, pandemic and I told her it saved my life. Mm -hmm. It really did because I was, it, it was a horrible year mm -hmm. and that was like a beacon of light for me and I enjoyed it so much. So it is it's, it's strange to me because all I'm doing is sitting up in this house in my drawers writing. So <laughs> I, <laughs> Yo, you are like <laughs> the best. <laughs> I mean, I, look, li listen, I'm serious. So I'm just sitting here writing what's in my head, what these people are giving me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I never see the other side of it. You know, I write, write, write. I publish it. And that's when I started thinking about what the reaction would be. Mm -hmm. But when I'm writing, I'm just in it with them and I'm just writing. And to hear, like I had one reader that came in uh, my DMs on IG and she told me, thank you so much for including the Yoni eggs. I, you know, I have different little things that if I learn it, y'all gonna learn it. I put it <laughs> And so I had the yoni eggs and uh, let me show you. And she was like, thank you so much. I got one and I am no longer incontinent. N never, mm. never occurred to me mm -hmm. <laughs> that someone would come to me with something like that. And I'm like, wow, you know, like that one little thing that I discovered and was just like, oh, I'm gonna give you some yoni, yoni eggs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I discovered and thought was great, did that for somebody. Mm -hmm. And it really does demonstrate the power of the pen the power of a story yeah. uh waist beads uh, just the different stuff that of course the pineapples the yeah, different I stuff say pineapples, but i'm like you know what i'm not even going i'll let you rock how you rock it so with people just seeing people like at my event like the the waist bead chick almost sold out i'm mm -hmm. like and all i did was put it in a book mm -hmm. you know i just put it in a book i do i have waist beads yeah do i like them yeah but i just the reaction to things Mm -hmm. It just, it, it warms my heart and it validates what I'm doing. It lets me know I'm on the right track. And it just, it just makes me happy because that's the kind of stuff I did as a reader. Yeah. I'd read something. I'm like, I want to try that. I want to do that, you know, and to see that I'm like, dang, I'm a real author. Folks mm -hmm. are trying the stuff I put in these books. It, it's just, I don't know. I, it's heart warming to me and it makes, it makes me smile. And it is motivating too, because you think, okay, so the little things I put in these books really do make a difference. Mm -hmm. Because the name of the book wasn't Yoni Eggs. <laughs> you know, that's just <laughs> that's just something I put in there. So yeah, I, I love it. It's 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 strange to me because, like I said, I'm just sitting around in my drawers writing, mm -hmm. but in writing in my phone, not even at a computer most of the time. So it's um, I think it's wonderful though. I love it. It's always surprising too. I I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Yeah, 
I want to stick on, on on you for a little bit, Miss House, if you don't mind. Uh, okay. So we, all right, so I, I'm going to ask this question really, really tailored to you. So you wrote under a different pen name and genre. Let's just call it horror because some people might not know what it is, and I'm not sure if you want people to know what it is. But let's just say you were a horror writer before, you know, going into this genre. Um, mm-hmm. And you did a complete 180. Like, you went from horror to this genre that you're in, like, Black romance erotica. Mm-hmm. What made you... For the people that's listening that's not really listening that's going to listen to this, she's not writing in horror. So not go up there and say, Cherie said you wrote a horror <laughs> book. So I need to go find a horror book. But for the purpose of this question, but um, what made you switch lanes? Like you did like a complete 180 um, because I read your horror books and I really love them. And I also read, you know, your current work and I really love that too. Um, mm-hmm. So what made you switch lanes? Um, and did you think in the beginning that the genre that you currently write in was going to take off like it did? Like, what was that process? Like? No. <laughs> <laughs> ne- negative. I, did. Um, I I wasn't enjoying what I was writing. I just, mm-hmm. there was no joy in it anymore. Mm-hmm. And what I do now is very much more my authentic me. Mm-hmm. Um, and also poverty. Mm-hmm. Um I need to make some money, okay? And, so, <laughs> and all I knew to do, I knew that I would I would be no good as an employee. Um, and so I said, well, I'm gonna have to figure something out. You, you know? know, it's been funny. This is like a, a what is it, a 360 or 180, one of those moments where it come back, it's full, it is a full circle moment because I've had a conversation with you before in an interview. And mm-hmm. I remember you telling me a story about when you wrote and how you were writing and how you wrote the first book on the ironing board. And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, she had such, so much depth in her story, your own story, and you shared that, and that always stuck with me. So for you to be here now, it's like, well, dang, talk about a testimony and just like being true and listening to yourself. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, There's no question in that. But yeah, I I Mm -hmm. always wanted to... um, I always wanted to learn, like, how did she, like, switch up so, like, and you did it so, eff- it looked effortlessly, um, and, and it really, like, took, when I say it took off, I, we was all looking up, like, well, damn, <laughs> we didn't see that one coming, but we, we're glad it came, um, and so the next question is for CCJ and Alexandria House, you both have events, girl, have you read? And you have the house party, we in the house, I'm telling you, y'all gotta get me on the rap for that. That, that jingle so what made you as authors decide to say you know what <clears throat> I can do me an event and it can be popping and it can be um where other authors can also benefit it's not like you just said I wanted to do it by myself and I wanted to just take myself and um have a, a book an author sign in for just me you said I want to include other authors so what was the process like and most of all why did you do it CCJ I'm still looking at you Okay. <laughs> well, um, so a girl have you met is kind of the 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 physical uh, embodiment of what the website and social media of of girl have you read yeah. does, where it's kind of all about putting black romance at the forefront. And I remember when Alexandra Warren and I when we first started when we first started it, we wrote down kind of these goals and stuff that we had and doing an event was like a stretch goal. That was like, you know, in five or 10 years, we'll do something like that. And then it was like, no, let's just do it now. (laughs) Like, why not? Um, And it was after we had, you know, we had, we had been to other, we had been to other events and I had, you know, going to an event that was really, really kind of catered to indies and really cared for indies. And then I had gone to an event that did not. And I saw the, you know, just that clear difference between the two. And it was like, there has to be, like, we need variety when it comes to our, as my bae calls them, Caucasian cousins. (laughs) There's so much variety. There's so much variety all over the place. Like there's uh, like every time you turn around, there is a book event that is catered toward the romance community. And you will very seldom, if ever, see any of us there. Or if you do see us there, it's like a kind of like a select kind of pre-approved few. And we 
we wanted something that was just kind of centered on us. Like this event is about Black romance. This event is about pushing Black romance to the forefront and offering variety, offering another option, putting our own spin on it. We're both authors. And so we kind of, we, we, we know what we want from these events. We know how to take care of the authors because we know what we would want to feel taken care of and just really putting the focus on just really putting the focus on them. And that is really what what Girl Have You Read has always been about for us. Like the 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 motto, I guess, is Black Love Center Stage. And that's that's always been the motto. And we've always maintained that. And getting a a room full of black women who love black romance and a room full of black women who write black romance, like sticking those two things together was, you know, that was that was the natural progression. And I honestly, I really, really miss it. I hate that we haven't been able to do it because I really miss it. Yeah. Miss House? Um, my event was born from just my appreciation for my, my readers, my little tribe of housemates. Um, I just wanted to give them something. Um, they did, you know, pay to go. So I'm not saying they didn't pay to go. But... Um, they got a lot for their money. I put it that way. So um, I just wanted to to give them something, uh, show my appreciation because I do so appreciate being embraced so quickly. Um, I'm, I appreciate that they like what I do, as crazy as it can be, you know, and and that they um, like engaging with me. So it start. That's what it started. It was going to be a gift. It's going to be something small. And I had this beer budget, but I have champagne taste. So the beer budget didn't work out. <laughs> and we ended up having all these, these, these massages and facials and uh, open bar the whole time and all this stuff. And I just wanted it to be like a girl's trip and, and they just come and have fun. And of course, I invited authors because I wanted you know them to, to love them, love on them, just like they love on me. Um, I, I truly believe there's room at the table for everybody. So um, it's on so much, so many books I was going to be able to sell anyway. They, they need to buy somebody else's. So of course we had guest authors and I just, I really just, I think as black women, there's so much on us that we seldom have time or have the opportunity to just have fun, just go somewhere and have fun. There's no assignment attached to it. You ain't got to sit up and listen to something boring. You know, you, you just go and have fun and meet other like-minded readers and enjoy yourself. And then at night, see some strippers, you know, and, and, and some naked penises and stuff. You know, I think every Black woman needs to see a naked penis sometimes. <laughs> You know, you know I, even if you got a penis at home, maybe you want to see another penis sometimes. If you don't have a penis at home, you want to see a penis, you know? So I wanted to give them that. I wanted, I really wanted to give them things that maybe they wouldn't get, you know, regularly. So, and, and, and I'm, I like, a, I like to have, a, I like parties. I just, I'm, I'm like a combination of ratchet and bougie. So yeah, I yeah. wanted to give them a ratchet bougie party. Mm -hmm. And I think I succeeded. So <laughs> I got a thumbs up. So um, that's that's what it came from. I just really wanted to gift them with something, and I'm I'm extra, so it, it ended up being extra. And the next one will be more extra because I have to outdo my extraness. Yeah, I mean, I, what do you say to that? I don't have, I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> Really listen, listen, you knew what you were getting when you invited me. Yeah, but saying. this is the thing. I, and I want to say this before we even, you know, begin to wrap up. I think what you, both you ladies, um, Alexandra Warren is a part of Girl Have You Read too. So I want to include all that. I think that's so great that you guys are putting on events and just the event space anyway, it, period, having them. Because I, I just had this conversation with my best friend and we were talking about like, you know, when I was a kid, like, you know, I'm sure my parents and my mother and my aunts were reading and doing different things, but I never saw them like have book club and go to events about books or even be in community outside of like church um, with black women to celebrate themselves, their bodies, like just that type of like 
atmosphere. It wasn't there. Like it just wasn't created. It was like, you could be like maybe an Eastern star or maybe you was a part of a sorority, or, but it wasn't just like, well, this space was created because I love books and then we're going to build upon that. So I do, I think that what you guys do, like seeing that vision and moving it forward, because, you know, we see the the videos and we see like the, the photos and stuff, but when you're in that space, it's totally like, it's like a concert. Like it's very, the energy is high. People are happy and they're excited. They're having a good time. They fly in. So it's like when you create something like that, that not only benefits yourself, it benefits the a community. I always say it'll always be blessed. Um, so I, I, like that was just my two cents about, you know, having these events. And then sometimes I remember um, a couple of reads saying that this is the first time they took a plane to go somewhere else. So that experience, the whole experience of just coming and going to a new city or going to a new town or a new place and then meeting people that you only see on the internet and like, you know, readers becoming friends is like you are creating more than just something beneficial for yourselves and your own platforms. It's like, a, it's a, it really is a community. So I didn't want to just throw it out there. Um, and so Belvin, we had, uh, you had said the thing about the meme and that meme, because I'm just so into like media, I know who said the meme. And that leads me to the question, um, Prophet uh, Beyonce G Giselle Knows Carter had said that, uh, that, that, uh, that quote. And recently um, she was in an interview uh, with Harper Bazaar and she specifically, I'm gonna read the quote straight um, and she said, one day I decided I wanted to be like Sade and Prince. I wanted the focus to be on my music because if my art isn't strong enough or meaningful enough to keep people interested and inspired, then I'm in the wrong business. My music, my films, my art, my message, that should be enough. And my question is, are you guys at a place where you feel like that this is just your work is enough? You don't have to worry about all of that other stuff. And if, if, you're, if you're in that spot, when did you arrive? And if you're not in that spot, do you think that's something that's always going to be at play? Um, Belvin. I think, I think I'm there. Okay. I'm not Beyonce though, by far. <laughs> but what, what I mean is yeah. because, you know, I've been publishing since May of 2008 and it's always been, you know, very, very important for me to allow the art to lead. And people say, you know, why don't you show your face? And, you know, we don't know much about you. Um, and it's because to me, that wasn't important. Also because I'm a diva and you, and my diva doesn't need to compete with my art. My diva is for the, my, my folks who got to put up with me. It's not for people who don't really know me. Um, but I do think that I'm coming to a point where, you know, people are less curious and they're more interested in the work. And how I know that is because I can post a picture of myself and I get less likes on that than I do my books, which I'm like, you did it. And that's what it's supposed to be about. I really want the art to speak louder than who LB is personally. You may not like LB personally. People don't like LB's work personally either, but you may not like me personally, but what you, what you do get is consistency. You do get voices, you do get a lot of color from, from these uh, novels and you get a lot of passion. The other stuff, you know, doesn't matter. And I do believe, and, I, and I'm very fortunate to have confidence, confidence to have confidence. Finally, I think, dang, was it eight hours or was it CCJ who brought, oh, CCJ, earlier with one of your questions and she said friendships, you asked how do we get here? And she said having friendships. And I said, that is very, very true because I remember, okay, I found my tribe, but I don't have any confidence. I don't have anyone I can talk to. I can bounce things off of people who are here. I have team love. And while they did rock with me as much as they could, they really couldn't appreciate what CCJ can catch because she's here in the frying pan with me. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just feel like when I need to vent, and I, I have those people I can, you know, check in with and I can, so it doesn't have to be on, you know, on the internet, doesn't have to be on social media. Um, and also like, I'm just kind of good with just, just showing the work is really about the work. So I, so anyway, I can be long with it. I guess I think that I finally arrived to the point where who LB is does not matter to, to my, my following at this point. I think they are, they really get the culture of the Love Belvin universe and that's what they're here for. Gotcha. Miss House. Um but I what that's what I love about Beyonce is her growth as an artist. Mm -hmm. I honestly love the stuff she's doing now more than I love the 
Destiny Child stuff. Tiptoe, tiptoe house, tiptoe. Yeah, the black is here. The hive is here. She said, yeah, gotta, yeah gotta. The, the depth of what she's doing. And so I feel like, I definitely feel like my art is where I want it to be right now. But I also am always in competition with myself to see what more I can do. Mm -hmm. And how far I can make the reader's mind stretch, mm -hmm. um, what expanding my universe to include elements that I haven't included before, or or types of people like the paranormal that I did. I want to do more of that. Um, I, I legit want to do a street lit book because I love street lit. Mm -hmm. um, and in in putting the poetry book out that people actually bought, I'm like, what? So <laughs> I think that people can see the, the range of what I do. And I, I think that I, I, I think that I'm just presenting art and I'm, and I'm right where I should be um, as far as that goes. And I just hope that um, I can continue to grow and I can continue to compete with myself. And, and of course, I'm always competing with Big South. That's, that's always going to be the litmus test for me. <laughs> um, but I'm no longer... I no longer have fear in that competition. Um, for a long time, I was afraid I would not be able to do that again. And now I realize I can't do that again. But what I can do is write a story just as good that's different. Mm. Um, like I told my readers when I put them boys out and they were all excited. I said, y'all see what I can do if I write somebody other than McLean Brothers? Just <laughs> let me write something. Just let me write, you know? So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm proud of my art. I'm proud of where it is. Um, I, and I'm proud of my attitude about creating the art. Um, I used to be, how much can I do? I put a lot of pressure on myself about how much I could put out, how many books I could put out. And now one of my favorite quotes is, um, a hare talked to, was talking to a lioness and she said, um, I have several children. You only have one here or there. And the lioness said, yeah, but my one child is a lion. So what I try to do is put out lions. I know that's so right. I don't. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That was a good one. So if I put out one lion a year, I put out one lion a year. If I put out two, I put out two. If it's a year where I can put out six books, it's a year where I put out six books. But I'm not putting that pressure on myself anymore. I'm just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I have to trust that there will be provision for me. Mm -hmm. And I'll be okay. And I don't have to push myself to write when my mind is not there or when the story is not developed enough for me to write it. So I've just learned to respect the art, respect the process, and do what I do the way I do it when I do it. Gosh, that, you, that was a word. TVJ? Uh, so I think, <laughs> I think that uh, my brand is me being all over the place. So <laughs> I don't know that I have, um, I don't know that I have just the clearest separation, but what it did make me think of was back, like when I first, first kind of like in the first couple of years of my writing, um, I would get these comments often about how, oh, you're so sweet. I can't believe you wrote something like that you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't get those comments anymore. And so I feel like I've won because <laughs> like it doesn't, like it, it shouldn't matter, you know, the type of person that you think I am. Like, like me, that shouldn't factor into what you think I can put into these words, what you think my pen is capable of, you know, just because I'm, I'm in Arkansas and, and you know whatever whatever other things like it doesn't like like, like that has nothing to do with the pen like my imagination literally has no bounds you know the only the only limits that I have on where my where my pen can go where I can go where my imagination can go like the only limits are what I put on myself and I feel like I'm kind of coming into a place where where that doesn't get questioned, where I can share these different parts of my life. Like you can't see me, you know, cooking dinner for my family or making crafts or whatever else. And 
know that I can still write the hell out of an erotica, you know, <laughs> just because I am, you know, coming on however many years married, uh, more than a decade married, doesn't mean I can't, you know, successfully write a woman who only wants to do one night stands or all, or, you know, just those things. And I, I'm, I'm glad to be in a place where the art can be the art and I can be me and I can share those parts of myself as well without it, you know, with, with, without the two interfering too much. Um, I don't know that I, it's definitely not perfect. <laughs> it's definitely not like a perfect balance. I don't, I don't believe, but I do think that I'm, I do think I'm pretty well balanced in it so far. Got you. Those are all really great answers. Second to last question. I know y'all like Cherie, y'all, you were holding me hostage at this point, but I just got to get these last two off and y'all, y'all could you know, be blessed. Since the pandemic hit, everything changed. Um, but Black people got a compound interest, right? Because we got Black Lives Matter. We had Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, the insurrection. We had like literally Donald Trump was the president, right? So I think one of the things that I've, I've learned is that what I thought mattered the most, like this was the most, like this was everything. And it was just like, no, it was the least. This this is not what you really, this is what you thought you wanted. Or this would look hot or this is what looks appealing. But like, what do you really want? How do you really want this to look? Um, and so my question is to you guys, what does your legacy look like now? And has it changed prior to 2020? Or has it just been more of tunnel vision? Or have you like re did a reassessment? Before you answer, I want the reason why I'm asking this question is because in the beginning of your writing career, you're you might have had goals, right? Like I want to get a thousand reviews. You got a thousand reviews. I want to get a whole group of people in my Facebook group. You got that. I want to be like one of the top black indie romance authors when and you are you guys have that. So it's like, how do you now start to like, you know, because we're in a new world now, even you know, it's a new mind frame. Like, what is it now? Because it I think it had to have changed, right? Even if it's just, I need to be more focused or I need to family, but what has it changed now but specifically pertaining to your work, like the legacy of your work? Um, I'm looking at you, CCJ, but I'm gonna let you sizzle a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go to Miss House. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> not, me, not me first. Um, <laughs> wow, I don't know that it's changed much because... My main goal is to be able to do what I love for a living for an extended amount of time. So, and I'm doing that. Um, my legacy, what I hope to, especially what I've shown my children, because child, they, they still are trying to think of businesses. So what I've, <laughs> I've shown them is that anything is possible if you work at it. Um, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be you work yourself into the ground to make it happen. So um, you can you can live the life that you dreamed of living. And the thing with me is, um, I guess the, the main legacy is when I was raising my ch children as a single mother, I was in survival mode for a lot of years. And just trying to get them to high school and college and everybody's grown now, but I'm still young. Don't be thinking I'm old. <laughs> um, <laughs> everybody's grown now. And I, I, had, I didn't have a dream for myself. My dream was to get them raised up, keep them out of trouble mm -hmm. and get them educated and, and for them to be self-sufficient. It never occurred to me to have my own dream. I was one of those mothers with love. When I get these children raised up, maybe they'll take care of me. Uh, they still ain't equipped to do that. But anyway, so um, it's, it's in finding a dream after I didn't think I had one. Mm. And so I guess my legacy is it's never too late to dream. Mm. And it's never too late for that dream to be fulfilled because never in a million, zillion, trillion years I think I'd be where I am now, that I would be able to make good income writing books um, because I came from a family of scholars. Everybody has all these, my kids got, all, got my kids more educated than me at this point. So I was taught you get an education, you get a good job, career, you stay in that career 30, 40 years. That's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. Only thing is that didn't work for me. 
<laughs> you know, I was steady hopping jobs. I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. And in somewhere deep inside of me, I always knew that a nine to five was not going to be the end all be all for me. I knew that I wasn't built for that, that I was supposed to be doing something bigger. And it's just the proof that you can be a little country girl and sound country and just have a big imagination. What a big, what a big imagination can do for you is amazing. So my legacy is you know, it's never too late to, to, to develop a dream and to fulfill it. Yeah. And that hasn't changed. I feel like when you speak, I become Willow Smith. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> the whole time, I'm just like, you dropped some gems. Y'all have all dropped gems. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, because life comes fast. And, and I think readers and especially aspiring authors who's just like you know it might not be enough time I don't know so I think that's gonna really like give them the courage to keep pushing that pen forward Miss Belvin coming in hot I feel like you should have let me go first because how am I supposed to go at the A house with that let me, go, let me go first before CCJ and A house next time um I do so I don't I know we only have one question to go but um I don't I don't really think I made it I I've not um, I'm not, I feel like I have so much further to go. No, no, um, no. before you even keep going with the answer and not to mm-hmm. interrupt you, it's not about how much further you have to go. It's has your legacy, the goal of your legacy, has it changed since the pandemic? And like, since our minds have kind of shifted on what black liberation looks like in this country, what justice looks like when something happens to black people or when we have the governmental issues that we had and how it directly affects black people. I should have probably gave you all of that. Um, and that- no, you did. Okay. You did, but you were, you were talking about being a top, uh, a top uh, seller too. Top yeah. But, but to answer that question, no, it has not changed. I, I feel like, although those things are very real to me, um, in my in in my personal life in terms of my writing my writing is still the same so I've been able to just stay focused with the writing and in in the midst of all of this noise this turmoil this injustice this these social issues um and I've been able to just kind of keep my craft the way that it is I believe um if there's some necessary if there are some current events that are happening that my clients are discussing that's fine with me, but it's not something I'm going into a project with. No, I'm able to just kind of stay consistent with what I do. Gotcha. Miss Jones? Um, so, yeah, you know, in the beginning, it was kind of about, well, I wonder if this many people might leave a review or if I might be able to get to this certain sales threshold and those things are still important now, but this, you know, kind of this past year, two years, more than anything. And I think, I think it was especially highlighted for me after Eric Jerome Dickey passed, just the ways in which like tomorrow is just really not promised to us and all these things that you want to do, these things that you've had in the back of your mind, like there is no guarantee, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I remember this quote about like procrastination is the arrogant assumption that tomorrow is promised. It's, it's something like that. And like, it's an idea that had been kind of weighing heavily on me. And I remember when I first started how there were just all these things that I did not know and things that I that I wish that I had someone that I could turn to, wish that I had someone to just kind of give me that information, wish I had someone who had who had traveled the path that I was trying to go down, someone that I could look to and say, well, just kind of those metrics to look to of, am I, am I doing this right? Like, am I actually progressing? And I don't feel like I necessarily I don't feel like I necessarily had that. Um, Not that there weren't successful Black authors in front of me, but their paths were so different than mine that I didn't feel like I could look to them and kind of do what they did because the paths looked so different. And so for me, I've been trying to just kind of focus more on being as transparent as I can kind of about 
the process about kind of the ups and downs of creation, um, whatever tips and information I can I can offer um, and offer before someone even has to ask. Like there's, you know, I was just responding to a DM from an aspiring author who she had questions and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's fine. But a lot of times, what about the people who are scared to ask? Yeah. Or what about the people who, you know, maybe they don't even like you like that, but they still need the information. It's like, okay, girl, <laughs> watch the YouTube video. <laughs> you can still have the information, <laughs> you know, and I'm just trying to, I'm trying to leave behind that trail that I wish had been available for me to follow. And that is something that, you know, kind of now more than ever, I really want to be a part of my legacy because I feel like I've been able to, you know, by grace of God and with a lot of support from my friends, my family, my readers, I've been able to really build something. And I don't want that to stop with me. Like, I don't want that to end with me. And it's one thing to, you know, like Hal said, be able to inspire, you know, your children. And then like Love Belvin was talking about being able to like, yes, all of this stuff is happening in the world, but I still have these goals. I still have these things that I want to do. And as much as you don't want to like turn a blind eye to it, you still got to keep pushing forward. Like you still like, if, if, if this is what you are believing God, that this is that like, this is what is meant for you. You have to be able to kind of, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know why I'm doing that. Like people can see me. It's a, it's a podcast. <laughs> it's the blinders, it's the blinders. <laughs> yeah. You got to put your blinders on <laughs> so that you can stay focused so that you can, you know, so that you can reach those things so that you can hit those metrics that you're so passionate about. And it's like, again, tomorrow ain't promised. And so you got to, you got to do it today. Yeah. And I think you do it. This is not me just trying to like suck up. I think you do an awesome job at like balancing that help because I can't imagine how y'all DMs and messages look, but I've definitely... <laughs> um told people I'll be like go watch she has a whole series on YouTube because you know because we're a book club they automatically assume that somebody either writes books edit they have that it's some type of like we can fill them out to something and it's just like there was no fill to fill them out with you know and so that has been like a great way I just be like oh here go the link you know what I mean and just go through all the videos thank you <laughs> um so I think that you're doing the work I think you all are doing the work but I'm just when you said about the YouTube and like creating something that a blueprint that people can at least follow I think and I think it's being heard a lot because I know I said those links um and this is the final question Miss Belvin since you wanted to uh be the you know put yourself out there to be the first one what's your hope for the 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 genre um and just like for the new writers coming into this because it's, it's vast, very different from when you came into like right now if somebody wants to drop a book right now if some might say some may say it's more difficult some might say it's more easier depending on who you ask on what day um but what is your hope and what 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 thing that you did wrong that you would tell somebody new don't do that do this um my hope is that writers will come into this genre confident that even if they have yet to find their voice, that they will lean on themselves, lean on their, their that confidence that they will find their own voices. Don't try to look at other people to see what they're doing and mimic it until you find your voice. Your voice is in you. If you can tell a story, you have a voice and you, and, and, and you just have to have the confidence to know that it will be that. I forget what I was listening to the other day. And it was, it was, maybe it was about rappers. I don't know, but it was talking about authenticity like you know find out who you are I mean so, and, and it shouldn't take that long you know for me I got lucky enough to know and this is probably because it took four books to write my first series but I when I was done with it I was comfortable in my lane so I didn't have to write like this person or write like that person I just kept up with my craft kept consistent and then I found my voice so I just wish that the the writers that are coming into the genre just had, and, and a lot of them, they want to get there, just have the hope and the confidence that you will find your own voice. What I did, 
that because I do I'm one of those and CCJ is too I can speak for her I, we do believe that it's easier now because there are more resources available there um, there are things that have been done a house came in and she just whipped all of our heads with the opportunities that came to her because of her project and I think that she made some moves possibly even unbeknownst to her that got more eyes on our small arena because prior to that no one was checking for us no deals were coming to us and I, I, audio was one that I credit her uh, for bringing a spotlight to you know our circle and making us making it known that we're profitable so um oh, I'm trying to still think of a, a mistake well the one mistake that I made was just thinking that not just not finding my tribe of black women who appreciate black a black uh, male and female lead um and I just hope that they understand we exist and too often I hear, you know, I stopped reading books, period, because all that was out was white romance. And then the other stuff that, you know, from, you know, older, you know, uh, popular, p traditionally published Black authors, like, I don't even hear from them anymore. Oh, my God, I found you. Then I found Tate Russ. I found CCJ. And then it went down a rabbit hole. So um, I just, uh, I just, the, that that's one mistake that I made. I did not do my research sooner to find that we are here. The, the 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 readers are here and they are hungry to see themselves in romance. Got it, Miss House. I'm scratching my leg. That's what took me so long. Um, <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I can't uh, not laugh because it's actually <laughs> funny. It's like who doesn't laugh <laughs> with a pair of scissors? Anyway, um, <laughs> so. I'm not perfect, so I don't want you all to take it that I think I am, but I don't see myself making mistakes. Everything was a learning experience. Um, there's some things that I might have done differently, but um, what I would tell a, a up and coming or future author is don't be afraid to take chances. Um, don't be afraid to um, at least entertain things that you might think, I don't know about that. Um, Cause I wasn't sure when I signed on with Tantor, I just knew that I was an audiobook fan myself. I loved audiobooks. Um, when I was a, a nurse, I, I was a, a community-based nurse. So I drove all the time. So I listened to audiobooks. So I was a fan of them and I didn't, necessarily I did some research I didn't necessarily know I don't know what they're paying other people you know but I was like okay this is exciting yeah let's try this let's see what will happen if, if they put this on audio and had I not done that a lot of other stuff wouldn't have happened so I'm very glad that I took that chance do I kind of wish that I had had the resources to publish let me love you myself and make more money yeah yeah I do but uh, ultimately, I feel like that was the right decision in making that, taking that chance. So I would say, don't be afraid to take chances and not just in stuff like that, but in the story, the storyline, um, the genre. Um, if you're someone who wants to write sci-fi and you think nobody will read it, they will. We, we, we need some black sci-fi. We need black horror. Um, uh, even if it's romantic sci-fi, you know, because I know we're talking romance, but just don't be afraid to take the chances and to trust your stories and your voice. Always trust that. Um, and I would say first and foremost, right for you. And if you're satisfied with what you've done, there's an audience out there. Everybody's audience is not going to be the same size, but every there's an audience for every author. And you just have to believe that and trust that and be willing to, to take the chance. I don't know if that answered it because I'm all over the place. Yeah, but and my leg's still itching, so. <laughs> PCJ, bring us on home before uh, this house has something else urgent that needs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my advice that I would give to a new, you know, to a new or kind of other kind of author is to just don't ever put, don't ever elevate anyone else to a position where 
where their where their say on your work has more has more weight than what you think about your work. Um, reading and writing are both, you know, it's a very subjective thing. You know, what, you know, what, what boils my tea may not boil yours um, and vice versa. And so it's really important as early on as possible to get to a place where there is absolutely nothing that shakes your faith in your ability to write a book. I feel like if you have the passion for it and you have the work ethic to put, you know, to, to put the time and effort into writing a book, that's at, at the core, that's all you need. Everything else can, can come along later. And to, to layer onto that, um, don't ever be it. Don't be confident in what you're doing, but don't believe your own hype too soon. Um, and this kind of goes into the the the, the landscape um, for indies. I think that the readership is a lot more forgiving um, to new authors than they than than it ever was for like when me love. Tay, like when we first started, like we were getting ate up, chewed up and spit out in reviews um, for things that I don't, you know, for things that aren't as, I guess, heavily, uh, heavily graded anymore. And I, and I think that's, you know, in some ways that's a good thing and in some ways it's bad. I just, I feel like there was some refining that happened through you know, through that process of that of that very heavy critique that we faced, um, I think it kind of forced us to really focus in on what we were doing and really focus. It really forced us to like, all right, I gotta get a lot better real fast. Like, I gotta these mistakes. I can't make these mistakes. I this what this review says. I don't want anybody to ever be able to say this about what I'm doing again. Like, I am going to be obsessed with getting as good as I can and I feel like these days I just don't like when people like your work embrace that absolutely you should feel good about it but don't get so caught up in that that you feel like you don't have any more improvements to make like because there is no such thing as a perfect author with perfect writing there's no such thing as a perfect book. There is always somewhere that you can be learning and growing and developing in your art. And but CCJ, can you can you expound more on what you were saying about? Oh, I know, <laughs> I know, because she hit on something. And CCJ is being nice when she said the type of reviews we got, and and it wasn't it wasn't so much as us saying. Oh, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. It was us proving like, no, I have the gift. You didn't yeah. like this, but I'm going back to the board. Like I'm going back in my bag and I'm coming. So it was more of a, it wasn't ego, but it was like, like we did have something to prove, like, because we got bogus, yeah. but everything yeah. they nitpicked over everything. And while I'm not in the habit of going and re reading any other author's reviews, I'm really not. I think what CCJ is trying to say is, that doesn't happen anymore. I mean, we were even, I'm not gonna read, but I'm just saying, I, I just, <laughs> I, I wanted her to expound on just the type of critiques we got. And it was just like left and right from, from people in our circle, authors, yeah. not authors, wannabe bloggers, like it, it came from every direction. So we had to develop a thicker skin and we also had to just get back in our bag and we had something to prove. I'm gonna yeah. read right now. <laughs> no, she's yeah. right though. Yeah, but came, but I felt like that was so strategic because she, she went off mute, and I was like, "Well, did she come off?" And it was like, "Hold up, let me." Because <laughs> Bay is being politically correct, and she's trying to wrap it up. But I'm like, "No, you really have to speak to that." And I feel like that kind of toughened us, and it really, it really it contributed to our craft. And it was just like a war out there, like, and that's why I, I remember praying, and saying, "Lord, send me a friend," because I'm like, "Yo, this." Critiquing me, you ain't never read no book before, though. That's all you do. 
So it was, it, it, I just remember, I remember the harsh critiques and everything. And like she said, it's, well, I'm going to say it's a balance. People may love you and they may not just walk in the middle of it. Don't right, lean so, to either side. All right. So what you saying that, cause now I'm gonna have to push it a little bit. How we not going to be here forever, but we, the, the point <laughs> is, cause we, we are way over time. I was about to be, I had my apology email written to up to get, go to y'all for the time. Cause I didn't, you know, I guesstimate it. But I have to add this on it. So then are you saying that the ring of, do, do you think new authors have that? Do you think they have that, like that only thing I could think of is music. So like the, the locks, they just recently had a versus. The reason why they were so good was because they went through like this whole bad boy, rough rider training boot camp. So that 20 years down the line, when they come up to the, to the when they are at that moment again, they can make history, right? So, mm-hmm. Do new authors have that? And do you think that they need to go through some type of boot camp? Or this is the, the thing right here. Does everybody Black need to have to struggle like y'all, the people before struggle? That, that's, see, that's, 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 that's where I'm, that's where I am with it. It's like, in some ways, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we already, you know, like y'all, CCJ y'all and love and, 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 right, you know, we went through that, so you don't have to go through that, you know, and it's like, in some ways, yes, absolutely, you know, like, I'll, I'll take those licks, and you can learn from what, you know, you can learn from what you saw me go through, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we'll, you know, we'll, I feel like the authors in our cohort, kind of our peers, the people who have been, you know, in this for about the same length of time that we have, we kind of, we almost kind of set the stage for people to even be accepting of indies because that was a lot of the reviews, you know, people saying, you know, well, I, you know, I, I knew I shouldn't have picked up an indie book, you know, and, you know, it was, it was a little stuff like that often, you know, and so we, we, we went through that and we, we proved that indies could do it. And so people are more willing and accepting of, you know, people don't even really look at it that much anymore, not in our industry, you know, is she traditionally published or not? It's almost, it's almost kind of a negative, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, like, People like to read indies, but at the same time, I don't want, I don't, I don't, what I don't want is for, it's like you, you didn't have to go through it, (laughs) but it's like, I don't want you to not have to go through it, but also not pick up the lesson. Like, I don't want you to, I don't want to see these authors just coast and not grow because they didn't have to go through the fire. Like don't go through the fire because I already been through it, but still pick up the lesson. Like don't just skirt past it. Oh, you know, that's a, you know, that's, that's an obstacle that I didn't have to go through. Like maybe you don't have to go through that obstacle. You don't have to run that course, but you can still go do some pushups or something. Like you can still train, you can still work, you can still improve, you can still get better without having to go through that you know, traumatic Mm -hmm. (laughs) stuff that we had to go through. And Mm -hmm. I think that's where I am with it. Like, no, I don't, I I absolutely don't want anybody to have to suffer. I don't want anybody to feel lost in the sauce like I did. That's why I'm on, you know, YouTube in my bonnet (laughs) (laughs) early in the morning talking about, you know, when my voice still raspy before I've had my coffee, telling people, you know, what I've been through and, you know, what I've been able to, you know, push through to make it happen but don't don't just you know don't 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 just run up to the table to take a meal you know just because it's been made available like you can bring something to the potluck too like and that's a horrible analogy but y'all no y'all, I, you, think it's it's true. I think it's Melvin, true wait 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 miss Melvin, before you even like go through <laughs> i just want to hear your actual opinion and not the the piggyback or you know the ex- the 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 featured thought like the extended thought but like how do you feel yourself well I was going to answer your question I don't think that I'm in any position to to make to say that oh they need to work harder like you used the rap analogy um like with the lots and everything like that no I'm not because I think that is something different like I think the culture has changed but I think here in, in this circle we have of independent romance black romance we can make it whatever we want to make it. I think we all have different flavors. 
Yeah. I'm still going to stand on what I said earlier. Just stick with your own voice. You don't have to come in writing like this person. You don't have to come in looking like this person or marketing like that person. We're all accessible behind the scenes. You ain't got to pay homage to nobody. Just stay. Be love is a, she's the first person that's coming to mind. That woman stays in her lane and she just been making, she's been cranking out, making that lane work for her. And she has her, her own voice. She does her own thing. There's room for all of us all of us, but you'll never get me saying like, oh, this is what these <laughs> newbies need to do. No, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't think that you were trying to say that. Every, every, no, I didn't, no, you, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think you did. I just wanted to make it clear because okay. I feel like there's, there, CCJ and I are trying to figure it out every day. And I'm sure a house is too. Like, like I was alluding to earlier, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get more into marketing. I'm trying to get pixel codes on my website. I'm trying to get people, hire people to, you know, promote my stuff on Google, help me promote it on Facebook and and Instagram. I'm trying to figure out, and it's not like there are peers in our small circles that I can go to. Actually, that's not true. I did go to Be Love. I did talk to her. She did give me, you know, some good advice or whatever, but you know, we're here to hold each other down, but there's so much room for improvement. And that's why I go back to a house when she made a decision to, to go into audio, audio, audio and killed it because that to me told people, Yo, we got heat over here. Black romance, you know, independent romance. We got some heat. You just have to give us a chance. So I just think it's room for everybody. Just stand confident and firm on your own voice and work your craft, work your business, stay. And I will say this, this is judgmental LB, but I've been consistent. Stay the heck off social media, giving your two cents about stuff that don't matter and got nothing to do with your, your craft. Focus on the craft, build a business, you know, work, focus on that rather than the noise that's going on outside. But there's room for all of us, all of us. Well, we thought we was going to land this plane safely, no turbulence, no nothing. Um, but I want to thank you guys. I'm wrapping this up. My last thing is that um, I've often been thinking, there's no more questions. This is like a last final thought. Um, I've been thinking about Black liberation a lot and what that means uh, to, to us, what we do, literature, whatever. Um, And I think a lot of people have a misconception of what black liberation looks like, right? I think we have a real, like, it looks like the civil rights movement. It looks like this, it looks like black, black, it looks like that. But black liberation to me can simply be learning or relearning how to love, relearning how, what friendship looks like, uh, relearning how to pace yourself or seeing yourself through characters. And I think that you guys writing this the the way that you do and you have characters and you touch on real life topics you're a part of the black liberation movement and then i thought about it a little bit further because the highest um expression of god is love and the highest expression to me of black liberation is black love so i'm just saying y'all are like you know y'all shifting the atmosphere giving us all of the energy and i really wanted to say that because um, it took a lot for y'all to schedule us for y'all to be here. So I didn't take it for granted at all. And like, this is all for celebration of Black Indie, Black Indie Authors Day, which is August 21st. And this was great.